<clears throat> light, please. Hi, did you know that Little Nightmares, while being the most known game series by Tarsier Studios, is not the only game that they've made? But this video is not about Little Nightmares, or this, or whatever that thing's for. Before they were even known as Tarsier Studios, a group of students had a vision to make a game. Without it, scary but beautiful worlds that we know would have never existed. The game? Well, the game was never actually made, so let's take a look at what we know about the city of Metronome. The year is 2004, 9 students came together to create something that has the coolest gameplay and the best world and a super good story. You might have noticed an issue here, as one of those students puts it himself, it was quite naive. Nonetheless, they carried the development forward and in 2005 they have an impressive demo to present at E3 of the same year. It was a game about a boy who meets a girl in a world of war building weird looking creatures, a world where children are transformed into gnomes to become workers in the city. Wait, no, that's... that's Little Nightmares. Okay, I'm joking, it's both. As you can see, the game was so important to Tarsier. In fact, the reason Tarsier exists at all is only because of it. And more than 10 years later, when making Little Nightmares, lots of ideas from the city of Metrono were still sitting in their hats, patiently waiting, ready to be used again. You would play as a young train engineer in training whose name is Tin, on his first day working as a ticket boy in a very bizarre looking city where everything, and I mean everything, the land, the infrastructure, the industries are owned and life is dictated by the corporation. How is it so powerful? According to the developers, corporation's backstory is as follows. On one of the worlds, the corporation found out about the machine which created ideas for all worlds. They wanted to monopolize its ideas, so they built their own machine and with its completion a need for maintenance arose. The corporation abducted children from other worlds and the city of Metronome was born to house this future workforce. And it all was going quite smoothly for them, but everything was about to change. As the sun rises over Metronome, thousands of citizens board the huge steam trains that will carry them into the city. Your job as an apprentice train engineer is usually very simple during the early rush. Check that everyone's work order is valid, record their voice ticket and then clear your card for departure. Now the entire passenger couch has gone quiet. Everyone stares expectantly at you and the raven-haired girl in the back of the cart. She looks distantly out of the window, ignoring the fact that her work order is missing, not to mention the strange coincidence of your voice recorder breaking down just as you were checking her voice pass. The girl's name is New and she was to play an important role in the game. She's a curious and a rather aggressive young girl who's on the run from the businessman. Together, you set out to uncover her hidden past on a journey that will lead you through several exceptional locations, trying to reveal the truth about the mysterious corporation and find the purpose of the city itself. Speaking of the city, there you will find strange little creatures, the metronomes. It is a child who has its soul extracted by the corporation, leaving an empty shell programmed for a specific task. The souls of the children were then used to power scouts, the main enemy in the game, which can come in many forms. Two types of scouts used in the demo were a walking camera and a police officer. First one will take a picture and pictures have a very special meaning in this world, so if you get caught, you have to fight it. Police officers are a much tougher opponent, but with a strong sound you'd be able to separate the soul from the machine. As it happens, players are expected to mash the stick in the direction the soul is trying to escape to help it, and as a reward for freeing it, the soul will heal you. Alright, now that we got an idea about the setting, what about the actual gameplay? Well, the main mechanic of the game was an ability to record and modify in-game sounds to use them as a weapon or to solve puzzles. Players would have three containers, each capable of storing 10 seconds worth of recording. Once you play it back, they are gone. You would need to record a new sound. For example, the first puzzle in the demo consists of a guard who is about to fall asleep. And if he does, his head would push the button, opening the gate. So we need to go inside the building and wake up one of the tenants, who then plays a lullaby to go back to sleep, record it and use it on the guard. You could also record a small dog barking, modify it a little pitched and you got yourself a sound for a scary but empty threat. 
playing music to a metronome allowed you to control its mind to assist you in solving puzzles. And according to the developers, they will do anything for you, even throw themselves into the cogs of a giant machine to bring it grinding to a halt. The look and feel of the demo were influenced by the Japanese animation house studio Ghibli, the architecture of Stockholm and Jeunet and Caro's real film The City of Lost Children from 1995. As you may know, some of those influences will later be found in the Little Nightmares series. The demo itself was short, about 10 minutes worth of gameplay. The visuals, according to the game journalists of that time, were some of the best at the E3. Characters were interesting, level design quite original and pretty much everyone who tried the game was very impressed. Sony and Microsoft were interested. So, what happened? Short story, they never found a publisher. Long, uh, complicated. The thing is, and these are paraphrased words of the Tarsier Studios themselves, they didn't know what they were doing. While they did manage to produce a great demo, demos are not a finished product, and there was no one on the team who had the exact vision of what stuff should be. The core mechanic of the game, the use of sound, was just not fun, and no matter what they tried, they just couldn't make it interesting enough. A few years later, when the team became bigger and more experienced, they gathered for a talk to try and solve those issues, but unfortunately they just couldn't. The sound mechanic, the very essence of the game, wasn't fun, and without it, was it really still the city of Metronome? And uh, this is pretty much where it all stopped. But the people behind the game are not sad about it, they are actually quite happy how it all turned out. According to them, Metronome never really died, parts of it are in every game that the studio has made. And even though thoughts of revival pop up from time to time, it's unlikely that we'll ever get to play the game. This was the story of the city of Metronome, the game that never was and yet the game without which we would have never got the worlds that we now love. Hope you enjoyed the video, leave a comment and subscribe if you did. Also check out the video's description for Metronome's trailer and the full gameplay video if you'd like to see it. Goodbye.